So we're going to start cutting very soon, but we need to look at a few safety points first. Now, this is a lino cutting blade. There are different types, and I like the V shape because you can get a kind of deep line cut into the surface of the lino. Now, I'm going to draw the V. So imagine this is the tip of the blade, and we want to cut through the lino. Here's the lino in cross section. That's a piece of lino sitting cross section. So the blade is going to go into the lino and leave a channel, a v-shaped channel, into the surface of the lino. So you'll end up with a top surface and a cutaway line. When we roll the ink onto the top surface, it will sit on this upper surface, but not go into this groove. That's how we generate the print. It will all make more sense when you've gone through the process and you've seen it all happen or watch the videos. The first thing I'm going to introduce you to is a bench hook. This is a school made one. It's not a bought one. And you can see what happens. It sits over the edge of the table to stop this section slipping. So a bench hook is a safety feature. If I put the piece of lino here, it is now nice and secure and I don't have to put my hand in front of the blade. So I've positioned the lino onto the bench hook and it's not going to slip, it's nice and stable. Although I do rock the camera as I'm pressing it. I take the lino cutter and I put it into the surface of the lino. I'm gonna push it a little way and hopefully see what's happening. I'm lifting it up and you can see that there is a burr of lino within the blade. If I pull the burr away, you can see a little groove that's being cut. I'm only cutting into the negative space at the moment, and this is a good place to practice because I'm going to cut this off later on. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to submerge the very top of the blade into the lino. So you're going in at a very steep angle. I'll just show you on profile. You see how the full blade is into the surface. If you're doing that, it's going in too deep and it's going to break the surface of the lino. You have to think about where you're cutting. So if I want to cut out the owl, I want to cut along this line and I want my blade to be on the outside, fully on the grey, running along the boundary of the black. So I'm putting the pressure through the handle. I'm pressing the blade in and I'm reorientating my position and my body behind it and I'm pressing it and cutting. Now the burr is still attached, if it stays attached you can just move it away. So I can cut all the way up to the block in front of me. It doesn't matter if this gets damaged of course, this is better to be damaged than you. Now. It, sometimes we don't have one of these bench hooks and when we're cutting you have to orientate the liner and hold it. Notice where my hand is. This is not best practice because you could always slip and cut yourself and printmakers often show cuts and scars they have on the hand. So as I'm cutting I'm holding the liner, I'm having to hold it quite firmly. You can see I did slip just then as I was doing it. What you don't want to ever do is have your fingers in front of the blade. You've seen me slip already. Uh, it wasn't for camera, I genuinely slipped. So if my fingers were here and I slip now, the blade, with all the pressure that I'm putting through, going through this dense material, is going to go in my finger. My finger is not quite as dense as this material, so you know what's going to happen. I'm going to get a deep cut. It's going to bleed. At that point, obviously we'll have a look at it, clean you up, um, pop a plaster on it, maybe go down to the medical room. Um, we want to avoid these things, that's why we have the bench hooks and we reorientate the work. So I'm going to cut a little bit more to demonstrate. And notice I turn it round as I'm cutting. My fingers are always behind the blade and never in front of the blade. I can't emphasise this enough. So if you're not sure at the angle of cut, you should speak to your teacher who will give you some advice. I like to try and cut away from the image because as you've seen, I genuinely slipped. So if I'm cutting here and I'm cutting away from the image, if I slip, 
I'm taking something off that doesn't matter. If I turn it around through 90 degrees and I'm cutting from here and I'm cutting towards the image, if I slip, I take a piece out I don't want to. There isn't an easy method to infill a piece you've taken out. Usually we have to think about how we can modify the design. There will be mistakes and errors as you go, but safety is the priority. So when you've done round the outline, my suggestion is we just cut out the full outline and then we start to cut off some of the background. Now later on, using a pair of scissors and using the heel of scissors, if we don't want any background at all, we might cut out using the heel round the owl. At the moment I'm not cutting anything out because I want to keep this in place because I want to be able to rely on the bench hook. If I've cut round the profile of the owl too early it comes a little bit harder because it's got an unstable profile and it moves around against the edge. If you find there's a load of burrs of lino stopping the lino touching the bench hook, just move them out of the way. Don't worry about popping them in the bin, just move them onto the table where you're working so that the lino is steady along the edge. If you have a large area you're cutting out, one thing you can do is you can take your blade, rather than just cut with the V, is turn it on its side a little bit and use the side like an L almost, so your V is on its side and using this flat surface to take a little bit out. Your teacher will demonstrate that to you if it's appropriate for what you're doing. It just helps take out a larger area quicker without changing the blade. So in this design, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the main shape and maybe a little bit of the detail and then I'm going to ink it and print it. I'm then going to clean it and I'm going to cut out a little bit more and I'm going to ink it and print it on top of the previous one. This is how you develop the reduction lino print. It will make sense when you see it. As it happens, as I've gone through it, I've decided to cut the ears off. Now I'm doing the eyes. The eyes are obviously very important because they're quite a dramatic feature and will draw your attention. So I'm being very, very careful and doing very small cuts as I do this difficult area. And I've done this after I've done my outline because I've practiced around the outline. And now I'm doing this very fine work. I'm feeling a little bit more confident. Now, one thing you can do to check on your progress is do a rubbing. This is just the process you'd use if you're doing a brass rubbing. I'm using a pencil and I want my pencil at quite a shallow angle rather than using the tip. I want to use this side of the pencil lead. Now, you could use a graphite stick. We have graphite sticks in school, but I don't have one at home. So if I put my pencil almost flat to the surface and rub across the top, you can see how the eye is coming along. I remember it's the neatness around the edge that I'm looking for. So if it's not quite right, I can go back and do a little bit more cutting. But I feel reasonably happy with that. This is just a little checker. we have put this within your bits and pieces that you keep in your folder of bits at the moment. And you can keep using it if you're doing a longer print. So I've just done the cut on the other eye and I've done a rubbing. And you can see that the pupil here at the top, it's kind of pointy and pointy at the bottom end. So I want to make it slightly more rounded. I'm going to cut off those end points here and here. So looking very carefully at what I'm doing, I'm really just using the tip of the blade, just modifying that shape a little bit. You don't want to remove it completely because you remember you can't put something back in. Now, in the studios at school, we do have something called a hot plate and the teacher will show you how to use it. You, They don't get so hot you could burn yourself on them. But what they do is they can heat up the lino. If the lino is cold, the oil within it is very cold, it makes it firmer. If you warm it up a little bit, it becomes a little bit softer. It makes it easier to cut, but also it makes it easier to slip. So you have to be incredibly careful when you're using warm lino. I rarely do it within my own work, but occasionally we do it where you struggle in the classroom. <laughs> 